Live. Yo, what's going on today, guys? What's going on? Let's see. Uh... <laughs> what is this? Should I move that? No, I think I'll keep it there. Hang on. Let's see. Let's see if we can cast Gadu in the best light here. Let's see. We got some green action. We're green now. All right. All right. We're a little bit of orange. We're going red. Hold pink. Strong pink. Blue. Blue. That's solid. Let's go blue. Mill to med. Clinton Kelly. Dan A. Mitchum. Mill to med again. So if you guys are on Facebook, I suggest you jump into um, uh, YouTube. Collector Art House YouTube instead. And uh, we're going to talk about what's going on here. So a couple of things. We got some news on P. Diddy. Uh, it looks bad. It looks bad for Diddy. Wait a minute. Wait, what are we talking about here? The playmats. Yeah, that's right. So the playmats. These playmats are flying off the shelves, Mike. How much demand do you see for these on the secondary market? Oh, you want to talk playmats first? <laughs> Thought we were talking Diddy. Um, so the playmats. So here's the deal with the playmats. They have the the dust playmats. I call them the dust playmats. They're they're what happened is there were four playmats. So we have the Liz Danforth. Uh, Mirror Realm, single player, right? So in the Kickstarter for the Alpha exclusive, how, how's the uh, audio, by the way? Is it good? We got all 40 decibels? I didn't check the decibels. Should I pull up the road app? Let me check the decibels real quick. I think it defaults to 40 now. Maybe negative 40. I don't know. It's hard to tell with these DBs. Ne all right, 40 DBs. So with the playmats, you had in, in the Kickstarter exclusive, you had the two-player... Mirror Realm playmat. There was very high demand. For some reason, these players, they want the one player. So they're doing the one player from Liz Danforth. And if you join Liz's Patreon, and I think the lowest um, pledge level is like $3. You know, people always say, okay, what's the link? What's the link? The link is you go to Patreon and you search for the name Liz Danforth. That's the link, guys. It's pretty simple. www.patreon.com. So you go there. And then you look for Liz Danforth, and then there's a three dollar minimum tier. You got to have at least the eight dollar tier, and it's eight dollars per month. No big deal, you know. And then um, that will make you eligible to buy one of her playmats. Uh, so I should take a step back. There's the four playmats that are being rolled out. Those will be available, from what I understand, through the Sorcery Dust Store, which I think is supposed to launch. I oh, know I don't want to restart. Restart. Oh, I don't want to pick a time either. We'll go tonight. Yeah, we'll restart. <laughs> All right, we're going to restart tonight. Um, oh, God. So four play mats. I think, so the dust door is supposed to open soon. And from what I understand, those four play mats will be available through the dust door. But then there are exclusive play mats with the same art that will be 100 copies of those. So the company made those at their own expense. Um, what I assume they did is they mass produced like a fairly large co uh, quantity for the dust door. So you could turn in your dust from the bottom, you know, on the bottom of the booster boxes, there's this barcode over here. You scratch that baby off and there's a code. You go to sorcerytcg.com. There's a login. You just sign up. You log in. You put the code in there. You get, I think it's 100 uh, points per box. You could also get dust points by doing um, like play, like the, the Cardi.io, you know, doing like in store play, winning, participating, different things like that. And then, um, you know, you get these dust points. You'll be able to cash them in for different rewards. So the four play mats, you have the Liz Danforth, Mirror Realm. I keep getting distracted by the chat. I got to stop looking there. Then you have the Drew Tucker. Um, the Drew Tucker one. I always want to say Primordial Ooze for some reason. <laughs> but that's definitely not the name of it, guys. Primordial Spring. You got the Primordial Spring from Drew. Um, really sweet, right? So they're picking these landscape, uh, the Atlas card playmats. It's easier to make playmats out of those. From Vincent Pompetti, you have the roots of Yggdrasil. And then um, Jeff Mengus, the Watchtower. 
right? So the four Atlas sites, there's going to be, you can, I think those will be available through the Dust Store, through the Dust Rewards, but then there will be 100 copies that were made at the company's expense, sent to the artists, and now the artists are selling them. So let's start with the Mirror Realm. The Mirror Realm, there was a two-player exclusive to the Kickstarter. You could buy it during the Kickstarter campaign, and then you could also add it in backer kit after the Kickstarter closed. You can't get those anymore. Those are sold out. Those are done. Um, now you get it in single player for the first time and Liz is directly selling her single play, single player mats. So you could join her Patreon. If you're at least in the $8 tier, I think she just put out an announcement on this and, uh, actually I'll give you the details cause I'm in her Patreon. I want to say she said like for the next 30 days or so, and these play mats are like super hot guys. There's only a hundred of them that each of those four sorcery artists received. So here we go. Artist series, special play mats. Um, should I, I think I could, uh, yeah, let me, I'll show this. All right. And then I'm going to like not show my screen. Cause it's, you gotta be part of her Patreon to see it, but, um, you know, to, this will help Liz by just kind of showing us really quick. Right. So right here, this is the play mat. So this is what I mean. You see in the lower left corner here, can I zoom on that bad boy? Let me see right here in the lower right corner. It's hard to see, but it says dash 100. And then here it says Liz Danforth Artist Series. On the regular version, that won't be there. You'll have the, the official sorcery logo down here, um, but you will not have this Artist Series in the lower right. So there's only 100 copies of those exclusively sent to each of those four artists. Liz is signing it down here, and then she numbers it. I think this is like a, a marker, number one out of a 100. Um, so let me pull this down really quick, because again, I don't want to show like the inside details of her Patreon. Although, let me see, is this a, if this is a public post, it would be okay to do. Um, I just want to be like careful to, when you sign up for someone's Patreon, basically everything you have access to within that is essentially, you know, NDA exclusive, um, since it's for pay, paid tier members, right? So what she says here is if you are in the $8 tier or above level, so she has different tiers above that, you can get priority to buy one of those. Um, I thought she put like a time frame to sign up so you can still sign up for her Patreon and be eligible. Um, after that, you're going to have to go to her website and it's going to be $75 plus shipping and handling. If you're a Patreon supporter, it's $50, right? And then, um, with Jeff Menges, he sold his, he made an announcement on his, um, website, his, he's got a Facebook, um, site, Facebook page, right? for uh, Jeff Menges, it's called Scarecrow um, something or other. I always forget the name. So Jeff with the Watchtower, he offered 50 of those and they sold out. He, he mentioned in my Discord today, the Collector Art House Discord, that um, he jumped in and commented because we were all talking about it and like really excited about getting these. And he said that he posted 50 and they sold out within eight hours, super fast. So those 50 are gone and now he's gonna go to shows. He's only gonna bring like six to 10 copies to various events. He's uh. Oh, Matthias, what's up, man? Just type your Drazzle and Google Translate. It sounds right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I struggle with that one, how to pronounce that. But um, so Jeff sold 50. That means he only has 50 left. He's going to bring like six to 10 or so to shows. He's going to be at the the um, Sorcery Social Club event in Baltimore in June. So June 14 to 16, that's Father's Day weekend. Whatever, bring the kids, do what you got to do. I'm going to be there. There's going to be at least five sorcery artists there. So it's super exciting. Um, they announced that Truett Parrish will be there. Um, and he was the latest to be announced. I announced previously and the guys, now Ron and um, uh, Lord of It's uh, Gadu, what's up, dude? Thanks for popping in. What do you guys, do you guys work by the way? There's a bunch of, there's some Europeans in here. I understand that it's, it's late at night, but we got, a, we got some Americans up in here too. And it's like not even four o'clock on a Friday. I don't know what kind of banker's hours you guys are working. I took off today. I just got back from Chuck E. Cheese with the kids. <laughs> so I got an excuse. It is good Friday. You know, we got the, we got the Easter Sunday holiday on Sunday. Um, so anyway, Jeff sold 50s, bringing like a handful of shows. There's going to be this event, the, the Sorcery Social Club event. I think that's the name of it, right? And then the quarters and cup is the big capstone tournament at that event. But there's also going to be all these sideboard um, tournaments, like draft tournaments, which um, you know we're starting to worry about now because boxes are suddenly getting super expensive. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, 
So Jeff will bring like maybe 10 copies there. He's going to some other shows. Soapy sleeping. Got caught. All right. <laughs> uh, Drew Tucker, I think, also made an announcement on Facebook. And um, he said that he's starting to sell those too. And he's getting, he's getting hit up a lot with those. Vincent Pompetti launched a website. I, was, I might end up helping Vincent sell those in the U.S. I don't know. I think he's thinking about his options. But he initially posted on a website and he sold like 17 of them in 10 minutes. So he got like crazy demand. And the problem is uh, shipping to the US is like $40, you know? So it kind of doesn't make sense to ship to people all over the world at exorbitant uh, shipping cost on top of the mat for like a, a mat that's not like a crazy expensive item. Go play with Maddie, okay? I'll come get you in a little bit. Come on, buddy. Take a drink. You want me to open it for you? All right, be careful, don't spill it. <laughs> all right, I'll be done in a bit. So that's Drew. Who did I miss? See ya. High five. All right. Drew Tucker, we talked about Jeff Menges, Liz Danforth, and um, which one am I missing, guys? Who's the fourth? Vincent. We just talked about Vincent. All right, so we'll see. He, he took down his site right now. You can't buy from Vincent at the moment, but that's gone. All right, so those are the playmats. Someone asked, like, what do you think about valuation of those playmats? I mean, I don't know. The demand's insane. It's like, what do you do with them once you have them? I think the artist series, they're limited, so that's going to appeal to collectors, of course. I like playmats because I use my overhead cam, and I can use it as a beautiful backdrop or for featuring cards or paintings or whatever. I mean, multiple use cases. Um, the people that play use them to play. So you don't necessarily need the artist series and you're going to be able to get the regular ones through the dust rewards program. So, so there's options out there. Um, surprisingly, I guess like the alpha ones actually had value. It's weird how playmats have value. That seems to be a thing with indie TCGs and then like over time to become fairly commoditized because there's just like so many variants and so many different artworks. Um, so I don't know. It's an exclusive product. It's a hundred copies. So it's pretty, pretty unique and different. Uh, so we got a Forza Azuri from, uh, from a Facebook user. Again, I can't see you guys on Facebook. So if you want to join on, on Collector Art House YouTube, I'll be able to see what your name is. Um, so the other bit of news to drop here, it's funny how everyone like blows me up when I'm on, uh, when I'm live. <laughs> the, the, the Collector Art House Discord is going absolutely insane between there was the so I think was it first we got the playmat announcement, people started going nuts, like buying those up super fast. And then we started having the, um, we got a, uh, there was a message in discord from one of the guys at team covenant, you know, I think he's one of the co-owners. It's not Zach. It's uh Steven, the other guy. And, um, he said they're sold out at, Ste at team covenant of the booster boxes of beta. So, People are going nuts. You know, there's a lot of single sellers that are in the Collector Art House Discord and other discords and just people DMing me and stuff. And they're saying that the demand is absolutely through the roof on sorcery singles um, because people are assuming like supply is really drying up. You can go on TCG Player. I think box prices spiked to $200 and then $250. Um, Team Covenant was creating some stability in the market because supply was essentially stovepiped um, through them you know, like funneled almost exclusively through them. Like most stores, typically what happens is you get a uh, product from distribution and then stores like don't like sit on product like a Rudy would or most stores need to churn product, you know, to stay a viable business. And for cash flow purposes, you got games like Magic and Flesh and Blood and all these different games coming out constantly. You can't afford to just buy every game and then just store it in the back or, or keep it on the shelf. You got to churn the product and then typically you buy more from distribution. So some people are being critical and saying like, oh, good for them. They sold all their stuff. They were greedy. They just want to make fast money. Um, you know, and they were criticizing that they had no inventory, but that's not how most businesses and most stores operate. They just simply, simply can't afford to do it. They need the cash flow to buy, uh, products, other games, even the same game. So typically they'll sell what they have and with the expectation that usually you would be able to buy more from the mainstream distributors. There's two main distributors in the U S that sorcery works with it's Southern hobby and uh, peach state, uh, PhD, right? So they blew through all theirs, the distribution. They, I don't know what distribution expected or what agreements they might have had with Sorcery. I think typically they're accustomed to getting more product as well or getting it in waves. 
you know, who knows? I don't want to speculate on like what uh, was communicated from Eric's Curiosa, but all I know is that from the store's perspective, they typically one way or another expect to be able to buy it from distribution the first time and then there'll be additional waves or product like dripped onto the or available for them to buy from the distributor at their distribution cost which is you know usually significantly lower than the 150 dollar msrp so the margins are very good as well they make some some money they get their cash flow back you know their upfront investment out by selling the sealed product or by having draft events or what have you so that happened very quickly there was no restock no resupply from distribution ever so stores were just out like entirely i know like europe was really starved for product i mean i think they had a short order window so the orders um the demand probably that uh eric's curiosa perceived from european distribution and stores out there was probably small because the game was new there was a short order window um, so I think at that time, you know, that's, that's what the demand was, but the, the interest in the game grew very rapidly. Right. And then without more supply, new stores that heard about the game didn't really have any mechanism in Europe to get it in the U S there was no restock. So stores were sold out and the only store and retailer business that had supply was team covenant. So team covenant, you know, I guess, um, Beta was initially slated to launch uh, around like, well, <laughs> it, it slipped a few times. Well, let's say like we all thought it might be October and then it ended up coming out first week of November or so, like November 10th, I think it was. Um, so what, November, December, January, February, March, coming on April, almost five months, Team Covenant has had supply and they've been selling it at MSRP of $150. And then today they announced they're completely sold out. So people are starting to flip out and panic. And, um, you know, people are going on TCG player and buying up. Someone just told me they had like a, a handful of Alchemy 9 cards or just bought instantly. Um, prices are, are spiking on singles, on sealed product, you know, TCG player buying beta boxes. Um, people are just panicking, you know, because... I think, you know, there were some interviews with um, Simon from the company and he was saying they, at the time, they did not have any plans to print more beta. So that's all we know at the moment. You know, I think he caveated that, you know, of course they always reserve the right to change their mind, but printing isn't easy. It requires lead time. Um, there's distribution. We've seen the challenges with that, just the logistics of printing the product in China and then getting it through distribution or even getting it to Team Covenant to then sell um just takes time right and now we have arthurian legends coming up in um their slated release said oh what, yeah. I, I found a look at this drew tucker but let's check out this drew tucker post yeah arthurian legends is coming out and so you make sure you're sign you're um tracking you guys got to get on facebook right i mean for, knock it off with this nonsense with you guys that are like anti-facebook you're missing out on everything i mean the announcements come fast and furious on facebook the community group here has what, like 3,800 people, just under 3,800 people, you know? So there's, I posted this news three hours ago uh, with the quote from Team Covenant. It says, folks, we're out of boxes. Much love for all the support these past few months. And we're, we're super pleased with how many new players were able to get cards. We have no expectation of, no, we have no expectation of restocking. So there you go. Subscriptions are open for Ethereum Legends. And we do have a limited number of slots there. Interesting. I didn't realize that was limited. Um, so, you know, it's, it's going to create some uh, some hype there to go sign up for their subscription model. Unlikely to last until release. <laughs> so we got some marketing tactics in there. Hey, limited slots, unlikely to last. So race to the internet and sign up for this subscription. So seriously, do consider signing up now as it's free. <laughs> it is a no-cost obligation subscription from what I understand if you want to do that through Team Covenant. Um, so that was the announcement. Three hours ago, uh, we found out Team Covenant is out of stock and they have no expectations of restocking. And we're six months out from Arthurian Legends, right? April, May, June, July, August, September. It could be, yes, yeah, six full months at least. And because they said, what Simon said was early fourth quarter, right? So that means early October. Um, I think we're talking calendar years and not government fiscal year here. So I'm saying uh, early October at the earliest and we're out of beta. So what happens for the next six months? It, no, no, no. Facebook does not suck. Facebook. 
my friend is glorious. Aren't you on Facebook? No, you're on uh, you're on Discord. I, I know you on Discord. <laughs> so look at look at look how great Facebook is. You get the news fast. I mean, all you have to do is sign up and just only join the Sorcery Contessa Realm community group. Easy. What's the problem? You know, you could join the official Sorcery uh, group. There's a they have a group. You could join the Sorcery Facebook page, and you could join the Contested Realm community. Facebook group with 3,800 people and almost all the artists in there. So it's awesome. It's a lot of fun. You know, we do auctions of artist proofs and original paintings. There I am. Multicast streams. Oh, so there's like 10 people watching. Uh, does that mean there's... Oh, no, I think that's just delayed. That was at the... Oh, no, it's, it's almost live. <laughs> Sees me scrolling around wildly. Oh, so we got Ed Beard Jr. is the one commenting up in here. Yeah, so Ed, I can't tell like who's commenting on the live stream unless you're on youtube and logged in it tells me the name otherwise it only comes across as facebook users so let's see i'm curious what ed has to say um ed saying southern hobby distribution one of the two largest distributors in the country told the large series this is the thing guys you got ed bear jr here copy commenting on the facebook group he's not on discord he's technically on discord but he doesn't use it so you can see the artist um chime in with their opinions so soho uh one of the largest distributors in the country told the largest retailer from the Mid-Atlantic, my dealer, so his his dealer's in the Mid-Atlantic, uh, he couldn't give more than a few boxes to the largest retailer in a, in a Mid-Atlantic area. I think he got only six. So I should caveat here. Ed uses um, text-to-speech, so sometimes there's a lot of run-on sentences and typos and things. So try to track with it. So his retailer, uh, they what he was told by so what his, what his dealer was told by Soho is that he couldn't give more than a few boxes. So, so Soho could not give the dealer more than a few boxes to the largest retailer in the Mid-Atlantic area. I think he got only six. He tried to order more, and they said there was none available months ago. So whoever is co controlling allocation to the main distributors held hostage to supply, which is why many retailers simply did not have product and could not promote the game. As of right now, Southern Hobby is telling the same dealer they have no information about three... Oh, Arthurian Legends. So there's a text to speech to text uh, translation area. So yeah, what he's saying is like he, so Ed works with like a local store who has like, I think he has a network of like five stores in the Mid-Atlantic area. Ed's up in um, Western Pennsylvania area, I wanna say. Um, so his main store and that store that has, is like one of the major uh, stores up in that area was only able to get six boxes and they're being told by Southern Hobby that there's no more. It's been gone forever. They have no plans of getting more beta. Um, so it's hard for them to, to support and promote the game. That's, the, that's going to be the challenge. Like the next six months without product, what happens to nurture the player base? How do people get supply? How do they maintain gameplay? I mean, I know, I mean, the guys running the, uh, sorcery social now in Baltimore in the summer, they might have to pay more to get boxes. That that's the concern. I mean, hopefully they have boxes for the draft events. Otherwise that event just got more expensive. Um, so hopefully they're pulling the trigger fast. Or if any of you guys are sitting on mountains of sealed product and want to help this big event, um, that that would be a very nice way to help contribute like a case at a reasonable price. Um, they're probably going to need like several cases. I mean, they're going to have a lot of a lot of events, right? So um, a lot of events at the show. It's not just a quarters and cup. There's going to be draft events. There's going to be learn the plays. I mean, that all requires product. Maybe the company can help out with their reserves. I don't know. I don't want to suggest that and sign them up for that. But I hope these guys can get the inventory they need because that is a big time event. It's going to be very exciting. Um, Jeff's going to be there. Jeff Menges, Drew Tucker, uh, Truett Parrish, uh, Tony Sublow is confirmed, and Alan Pollock. So the interesting thing is, like I've mentioned before in some of my live events and my streams in the past, is that Alan Pollock and Tony Sublow used to share a studio together when they were at TSR. This was like 30 years ago. I think it was even, I think they were working on like Dungeons and Dragons art at that time. Probably, was it in the 80s? I think it might have been in the 80s is what Tony told me. So it was, it was those two guys and Jeff Easley shared a studio back in the TSR days. And Tony just told me like a week ago that he hasn't seen Alan since like 2004 or something like that. I mean, it's been like 20 years since he's seen him. And I know he thinks like very highly of Alan. Like Alan's a great guy, really nice guy, tremendous artist. I mean, 
their buddies and Tony has a lot of respect for his talent. So it's kind of, uh, it's really a beautiful thing that this fan run sorcery event is uniting these two artists that have all this rich history together and they'll see each other for the first time in 20 years in Baltimore in about two months. Um, second week of June, June 14th to 16th, um, the 14th, they're doing some LGS type activities in, uh, at a store in Northern Maryland. And then Saturday and Sunday, they're going to have the two day event with all kinds of activities. I mean, there's fans bringing original paintings. They're going to be hanging up around the place. It's at a hotel, like in a convention center area. So it's, there's going to be hundreds of people there. You know, they have capacity for like three, four or 500 people, I think. So they're, you guys got to get the tickets. Um, if you're in the collector art house discord, you could find the link. You could also find the link. If uh, is Lord of Itza on? If you're on, man, and you have the link to the the Sorcery Social Club Quarters and Cup event, um, let me know, and I will share that in the chat here so people can see. And he's posting it all the time here in the Sorcery Community Group as well. So I'm trying to scan really quick for a quick link. I was busting his chops earlier because the uh, the link was like showing some weird default. That didn't. Oh, Lindsay's doing a reveal too at the event this week on April 6th. So, I don't know. Where's that link, man? Here it is. Look, Sorcery Social Club presents the Spring Sorcery Social. That's the name of it. The Spring Sorcery Social. So, let me copy this here. Copy link. Let me do one of these. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. What is that? Hang on. Let's see how this comes across, guys. <laughs> no, that's no good. All right. Let me do one of these. All right. So, I got to go to the page. Let me see if I get rid of all this garbage. Why is it giving me this crazy ass link? Who knows how to use the internet? All right, so I wanna do one of those. All right, so here's the event. All right, here you go. This is the link you want. So go here. Yeah, beta is sold out at Team Covenant, too fluent. It is. All right, so what we're talking about is the Sorcery Spring Social, and here is the link, all right? Spring? dot sorcery dot social so let's just take a look here so you come to the home page it's in baltimore maryland june 14th to 16th we're going to get to the sold out boxes from team covenant in a minute i'm kind of all over the place we talked about the play mats we talked about this the team covenant announcement um and now we're talking about the june event so the main all right the 14th at no land beyond that is a LGS up in Northern Maryland and then in Baltimore, Maryland on June 15th and 16th is the main event. The main event is epic. Look at all this stuff going on here. So they have a link where you can book. They have a, um, right now, if you act quickly and get your tickets, you can get from the room block. You can get special tickets. All right. So they're going to have five guest sorcery artists. They're going to have sorcery art hanging on the walls. Is it easier to see when I do that? The quarters and cup tournament. That's the capstone tournament. There's going to be several other tournaments up to 50 draft events, 20 constructed events, and five sealed events. So tons of events. All non-cup events will depend on attendance, and there are the max we can support with the venue. Okay, so you can buy tickets. There's the button. Who will be here? Jeff Menges, there he is, with the sunken treasure. Drew Tucker, Alan Pollock, Tony Sudlow, and Truett Parrish. Five artists. Then... You have other artists and goofballs like this guy. <laughs> All right, so you got Lindsay Lee. She's an artist that I think, if I'm not mistaken, she might have been commissioned for the art for the Cores and Cup prize. Lynn Klingler, she's from Manipulated MTG, so she does altars. Um, she's, I think she traditionally does magic altars, I want to say, but now she's doing sorcery altars. You guys know Steve Abinkowski. He goes by Centerpoint. You probably know him better as Centerpoint in the Discords. So Steve is an artist. He's going to be at the IX Art Show um, this October in Reading, Pennsylvania. And he's going to have a boot there. So congratulations to Steve. And he's going to be at the IX Art Show event. Here you got Lewis. I saw you in the chant, man. Too fluent from Florida coming up. He's hosting. Lewis, when is your event? Is it like tomorrow? Or did you already? No. When is it? Did you already have it? Was it Wednesday? I don't know. You got Louis. Zach from Zach Attack, Spin Scott is doing like the music for the Friday night. <laughs> and then Zalem is remote, remote guest commentator. So Zalem just won the March of the Mortals and he's uh, a very skilled player. Um, oh, April April 20th is uh, Two Fluids event down in Florida. 
All right, so there you go, guys. There's the artist. Gas jumps you there. Schedule. I know Ron's working on this. He's working to figure out times for the different events yeah. for the for the three days. And there you go. All right. Yeah. What's up? Go play with Maddie until Sophie wakes up. Then we'll go outside, throw the football around. And what are you Maybe play doing? some soccer. I'm talking about some crazy stuff going on. Give me a high five. All right. Here, take this to Maddie. Don't play it too loud, though. Make sure she controls the volume, okay? Not too loud. Why do you need this for? You can make an announcement. I need to... Maddie can do it. You can do a recording. What's cool moving? Huh? Is this the middle? Yeah. Ask Maddie. Don't turn the volume too loud, though, because Sophie's sleeping. She'll turn it on for you. Okay. All right. All right, man. <laughs> I'm alone and unafraid. <laughs> the wife's not home. All right, so let me um, let me stop sharing. All right, I'm back. All right, so there you go, guys. There's the details on the Sorcery Spring social. Damn, almost 90 people up in here in live ch in uh, on the live. Nobody works anymore. <laughs> in the U.S., we work till 3 p.m. It's late in Europe. Makes sense. West Coast. I don't know what Dan's doing. Dan Dan is gainfully unemployed. I guess you're on the West Coast, right? Minox soup. All right, what's up? So, having three kids. <laughs> three kids, man, it's wild. I got one, the youngest is sleeping. I got a nine year old, five year old that just ran in here a few times, and a three year old who I, uh, I was able to bamboozle to fall asleep. All right, Jeff's always working. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Keep the commissions and the, and the artwork coming. So, KP Skate Park is at work. All right, so what do you guys think about Team Covenant um, running out of beta? What's the impact? I mean, we're, we're already seeing the immediate impact. Beta sealed boxes are spiking, and singles are just going nuts. Like, people are buying out TCG player. Um, I, I think someone told me on my Discord that uh, someone just bought up, like, 17 beta. What was it? 17 beta Philo Stones? Were there really that many listed? That can't be right. That's hard to believe that there were that many. Maybe it was like cores or something like that. But, I mean, people are speculating now. That's what's going to happen. People are going to panic because Team Covenant was... This This is kind of like the pro and con of having like a, a choke point for distribution. It was great while it lasted because like it was great in some ways, right? I mean, the price was stable. Booster boxes were $150. It was great for players, I'll say, because players could just go on Team Covenant website and buy it up for 150 bucks as much as they wanted up to like four cases a month or something insane for five months. So it must've been like a fairly sizable print run um, to support that kind of supply, assuming a lot of people were buying from Covenant. I mean, it was the only place to buy. So, um, but now they're saying they're out. So what happens? I mean, you go to Dave and Dave, what is it? Dave's cards or Dave and Adam's card world. Um, let's take a look here. I think they're at Dave and Adam's. Is that what it is, guys? Dave and Adams? <laughs> Dave and Adams Card World. Here, let's take a look. All right, let me go back to the screen share again. They're at like two. They were at like two hundred to two fifty. I thought they didn't have any listed, and then they listed it. But this is what happens. Like the main supplier is out. Uh, so what happens? Whoever else has inventory is going to start jacking prices. There you go. Two twenty four ninety five a box. And they, they do these like little marketing tricks, right? Like to uh, mark down from two ninety nine ninety five. You can get it for only two twenty four ninety five. Incredible. <laughs> what a deal. What did they say here? In two in twenty twenty two, all right, they're talking about the four million dollar Kickstarter campaign. I don't know. There you go. Thirty six packs, fifteen cards, two hundred twenty four ninety nine is where we're at. If you go to TCG player, <clears throat> let's take a look there now and see if we could find the price for, for Sorcery Sealed. They were saying in my Discord there, dude, is that 200? Um, I guess, I, all right. So there's Alpha, 1224.98, interesting. And then a case, nine grand, a market price. All right, beta booster box, here we go. So they're at 246.86. Um, latest sales, today's the 29th, right? Let's look at the latest sales data. So, wow, look at all the sales today. Load more sales data. So it keeps going. Okay. So starting at, 
All right, so price was at 198.95, which is probably about where it was. Look, let's go back in time here. It was always between like 150 to 200. For some reason, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's Europeans. Maybe it's like people that don't know Team Covenant exists. I mean, that's not everyone knows about Team Covenant, right? So some people their go-to is just a TCG player when they can't get it at their local LGS or other main mainstream stores that they're used to buying from. So. As of like first sale this morning, it was at 198.95. Then it hit 200. All right, so most of the sales are at 200, but the latest listed prices, yeah, you now see like the lowest floor is uh, 246.86. So it's just not available um, at 200 anymore. People increase prices to at least 250, uh, roughly 250 with shipping or 260 plus, including shipping. So. I don't know. There's the uptick. Um, interesting. So what happens next? 250 on eBay, says Dan. The question is now, what does Eric Curiosa do for the next six months? Um, what do players do for the next six months? What do stores do? What does Team Covenant do? <laughs> you know, do they keep any reserves? Um, they they have uh, play events and, and uh, marketing content they do and whatnot. Um, Europe's been kind of tapped out for a while. It's kind of crazy. Like what happens with these events too? We got the, the spring social happening in June. I don't know, like in the latter part of the year, um, are there any other events you guys know of besides that one? That was the last one I think I'm, I was aware of. There's like all kinds of qualifiers that Ron's been organizing for the spring sorcery social, um, that are precursors to the, the main event in Baltimore, but uh rudy's drop might help but 300 dollars per box by the end of april will be likely yeah so he's get he's said he's gonna have what a thousand kits was it or two thousand i think it was two thousand kits and what did he say was in a kit like three boxes or so um so let's call it like i don't know three boxes two thousand kits six thousand boxes about to come on the market all right, so that, yeah, sure. That will, that'll be interesting to see. In the near term, if people just like list those, if that creates some some extra supply that brings the price down a bit, or are people just going to hold out at that value, assuming like that is, as far as we know, the last wave, and then that's it, right? Yeah, 2,000 kits, they're saying. Two boxes, okay. So 2,000 kits, two boxes, that's 4,000 boxes coming from his sale, which I think is next weekend, right? Um, so yeah, after next weekend, you get another 4,000 boxes on the market. I think he said it's gonna take him a month to ship. So let's say uh, we're almost coming up on April 1st, let's say uh, by May, let's call it mid-May conservatively. By mid-May, 4,000 more boxes on the market. How long will it take to flush 4,000 boxes? I mean. I don't want to sound cynical. Like I don't mean flush negatively, but there are going to be people that try to flip it, especially, you know, Rudy's got a lot of like mixed fans, you know, people that like flesh and blood, people that like magic, the gathering that aren't into sorcery. So those people tend to buy these kits and then they just flip it on TCG player or eBay or in the discords or whatever. And then, you know, of course, some subset are going to be genuine collectors and players that are really into sorcery and they'll probably just keep them for themselves. Right. Or maybe like flip, what would you say it was two boxes only two boxes right so you assume like most so some percentage will sell both some percentage will keep one or so, so it's three boxes some people are saying two some people are saying three three boosters and one pre-con some people are saying two boosters and one pre-con i think it's three booster boxes and a pre-con right so three boxes some will sell all three some will keep one sell two some will keep two sell one so you're gonna have out of uh, our three boxes now, you're back up to times two kids, <laughs> two thousand, two thousand kids times three boxes. We're back up to six thousand boxes, right? Six thousand boxes, not four thousand. Six thousand boxes coming, and let's say like half gets sold. Three thousand boxes get put back on the market because it's an exclusive Patreon sale. So what what reaches the broader public market? Three thousand. I mean, how big is sorcery? We got 3,800 people in the Facebook group and certainly like not all are active, but you know, I look at the insights and metrics cause I, I created the group so I could see like kind of the insights and the curves that show how many people have joined over time, how many actively engage. And it's like, you know, over a thousand easily. So 
if they all want a beta box, it could be absorbed fast is my point, right? And it's sold through different retail outlets, just trying to gauge the size of sorcery as a market. I mean, the Facebook group is just one metric. There's three, there's 30, 3,800 there. There's like, what, how many are in the um, official Discord now? Like 6,000 some? In Sorcery's Discord. There's like several fan Discords. There is the official Sorcery Discord. Let me take a quick look here. 68.99, yeah. So they're closing in on 7,000. You know, several content creators, myself and others, have a, a couple thousand in each of ours, like one to 2,000 or so. So, I mean, Sorcery's not huge, but it's like big enough to absorb 6,000 boxes or 3,000 if that's how much hits the market. The question is like, how do stores continue to support the game without product? Um, they can offer a facility where you can go and play, but it becomes a bit of a concern or a big concern for draft format play, right? Where you open a sealed, you open sealed product and you construct decks from those packs. That's going to be hard to do at a price point of 200 to 250 plus. Um, and it's over six months, right? So does the problem get exacerbated between now and Arthurian Legends? And then what's the impact? Do people just pay more? Uh, what's the breaking point? Like the problem is always the concern is with game players that it's too prohibitively expensive to get into the game, right? So when you have supply choked and you have to pay $250 for a booster box and I don't know about pre-cons. I think pre-cons are maybe they're available now. I don't know. Does Team Covenant still have pre-cons, guys? Do you know? Um, I don't know if the company get more pre-con decks out there. I mean, that's an entry-level way to play the game. So maybe that would still be pretty inexpensive to at least get in and play. Uh, but then what? Like, how do you get booster boxes? How do you get new collectors to buy in? Maybe collectors have deeper pockets. I don't know. And they're going to pay $250 a box. Players, that could be a turnoff, right? That's usually the player's concern. They don't want to pay a lot for a box. And up until now, they've been able to buy it for $150. They've been able to buy singles on TCG Player for beta, like very inexpensively. I mean, it really doesn't cost a crazy amount to um, to make a deck. Uh, <laughs> maybe I should stop sharing my screen for a minute. I'm getting messages. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tony sent me a message. You never know. He's a little unpredictable. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Like, what do stores do now? what do they do do they just pay up and then mark up the cost i mean as you are there if there's players watching and i'm sure there are we got almost 100 people on the live what are you guys willing to pay per pack or for like sealed product to get into the game what are you willing to continue to play to continue being involved in the game um Hometown TCG says, was the announcement about TCG being sold out today? Yeah, it was, man. It was on the, um, I was just showing it. It wasn't like a, a big, broad announcement. I think it was in their Discord. Um, and I posted it in the Sorcery Community Group. So I know you're in the group. You're probably not tracking it as regularly as some others. But, I mean, people went nuts with this with this posting. So I posted it here. And it created like a lot of chatter. And I was like, hey, let's go live and talk about it. Yeah, like 65 people or so liked it and commented on it. And I shared the post here. This was uh, Steve from the company saying that they're out. And the big thing is we have no expectation of restocking. So no expectation of restock. So what does that mean? I'd be interested in your take actually on that, Josh. What do you think? What do you think about looking forward six months? So one... What do you think if there are no more boxes provided through Team Covenant or any mechanism, how does that impact sorcery, the community, the player base, their ability to grow the game and their ability to retain people? One. And then how, do, how does it affect, all right, so the current customer base retention. How does it affect attracting new people to the game? That, that's what I was just talking about. The barrier to entry to play the game, right, is always cost, right? There's like, for one, the artwork is amazing, irrefutable. Everybody loves the artwork, right? I've never heard anyone that said, that said like, the artwork sucks, <laughs> you know? Or like some of them are like, oh, yeah, it's, it's pretty good, but come on, guys, you're getting crazy. I mean, Magic has amazing artwork, too. I'm not a big fan of like some of the wild concepts they're doing with squirrels and, and stuff like that, personally, but... They got like amazing artists, irrefutably, extremely talented, top of the line, like some of the best fantasy artists in the world, in my opinion. 
And um, but that's aside from the point. So the art's attractive. The game is awesome. I mean, I've played the game. Some people will think I have never played the game. I have played it, and it's a freaking awesome game. And like everyone, almost like everyone that tries the game says they at least like and enjoy, had fun playing the game, right? Some are like critical about certain things of it. They say like, I don't know if it's critical, but like they say it's it could be challenging to learn at first or having to reference the rule book a lot or like go dig on the internet or through YouTube videos to try to understand rules. So they don't know if they're playing um, correctly and it just takes like a lot of energy and time to get through a game to kind of learn how to play. Um, so that's why the learn to play in stores, I think is important in my opinion. And I've always been concerned about like the proliferation of stores. Like how do you get this product more widely distributed through stores and readily available? So people, so the stores will support it, you know? And then, so they'll teach people that that's the big value. You want the players coming in to teach each other. And then you want the stores hosting events to teach the players to collapse that uh, learning curve and really get them up to speed quickly. Um, so, you know, that's going to be a challenge. Now, without product, it becomes that much more challenging. Before, they could have bought it from Team Covenant for 150 bucks, And, you know, it's yeah, it's a bad feel for those stores that they then have to market up to their customers who could alternatively just go on the Internet and buy from Team Covenant themselves is the reality. Um, but now it's, it becomes increasingly challenging that you can't even do that, right? So what do you do? You got to go to TCG Player or eBay and spend $200, $250 plus. And, uh, you know, it's a harder sell for stores to do that and for players to pay. So <clears throat> Henry says, in my opinion, they need to release. Uh, <laughs> I grabbed the wrong one. In my opinion, they need to release two sets a year and they do need to improve stores getting product. If they can adapt as they grow, it'll be beast mode. <laughs> beast mode. Well, yeah, I mean, two sets a year, I think, would be nice. But, um, oh, hometown TCG with the with the facts here. Sold today, boost, 21 booster boxes and eight cases. Yeah, well, the announcement just came out about three hours ago. And I was showing on TCG Player how there was an uptick in the price, right? Let me refresh this page to see if anything's changed. But the, the low price is now 246.86. And they oh, okay, so there was a recent sale as I was talking here, just uptick to someone paid 252.25 for one box. Prior to that, it was at 200. Someone bought three boxes at 200 a piece. Um, so yeah, that's what's been happening. It's only been three hours, so it'll be interesting to see now for these additional listed boxes. And you see, no one really has a bunch listed, and they're probably gonna wow, even the amount available is very low. You got two, so one, two, three, four, five, six sellers, and none of them have more than five boxes. Um, and there's only like a handful, there's only a few that are at $275 or less. And then this guy's just shooting for the stars here. He's got five boxes at $499.99. So not a lot of breadth of supply, which is pretty interesting. People are going to wait. Maybe they haven't heard the news yet. They might wait for this situation to flesh out a little bit and then see, try to like, you know, get the most they can for it, take advantage of the situation a little bit and try to post it for as much as they can get. You know, if you rush to sell it now, the risk is it could hit 300, 400. Maybe people go nuts and pay 499.99. I don't know. But that seems to be uh, the way the market's treating it, right? Um, <clears throat> in Europe, it's been sold out for a month. Months, I think is what he meant to say, which means starting a play group is incredibly hard. LGSs don't want to have play time since there's few players who even have cards and no product to sell. Well, so now in the U.S., there isn't product to sell. I mean, they could have got it from Team Covenant. Now that's a challenge, right? They got to go top pay here on TCG Player and eBay. Um, but there are players and there are people that have cards. I mean, we've had it plentifully available for five months now. And that's the catch-22. I mean... You don't want the company to, to print this thing like this is the challenge with once a year, right? Are they going to like just have multiple waves for an entire year? Then people start crying about supply, right? Like you went nuts. You're going to dilute the market. The singles are going to tank. The sealed boxes are going to tank because the singles have no value. So the intrinsic value of the box is very low. You can't you can't continue to print for a full year. If the, Certainly if demand is high because then that just gets scooped up and then 
I mean, if there's genuine demand, sure, then you have like a huge market that can absorb it in a genuine way and collect it and play it. But, you know, there's always going to be speculators and flippers and that's going to, if you overprint, you know, that that creates issues as we've seen in many games. Um, so how do you deal with that over the course of the year? We thought like maybe it was just gets funneled through um, Team Covenant. And I guess like if you went through a single supplier like that or a, a single distributor or store, so to speak, you could strike an agreement where you impose sales limits, right? So instead of, I mean, they were selling like, wasn't it 24 boxes um, per month per person? So that's four cases per month per person, which is pretty wild, you know? Like that is a large quantity. And I know like breakers and single sellers were just scooping it up. They were getting the four cases every month, cracking it all and selling those singles like crazy on TCG Player and they did very well. Um, but I don't know. That's, that's where we're at with it now. I mean, so what do you do for the next six months, right? What supply you choked even more. All right. What, what other comments do we have here? <clears throat> yeah. Some people are saying they were just about to order. So they kind of missed out. Feel bad. Um, I don't know. Crosswalk says, hasn't it been sold out a few times at team covenant before they threw up more on the store? I don't know that to be true. I don't think that's the case. But um, even if it was, I mean, you just saw on the Facebook group, guys, on the Sorcerer Community Facebook group, I posted the exact quote. <laughs> oh, my God, what now? He said that they're sold out. He made an announcement this time, right? So it's not like playing games. Like, you go to, um, I don't know, like all these like game nerds is... is I mean, I don't, it's not like playing games per se. It's like a, it's a sales strategy. Some of these major online retailers, they say that they list a quantity, right? And it implies a certain amount of inventory. They say there's a hundred boxes or there's 50 or something. And then you see that like trickling down. You're like, oh shit, there's only like 10, 20 left. People buy them and then boom, more get listed, right? So why do they do that? It's so they can pace it with, with uh, true market value, right? So like after they sell out, if the market pivots and it goes higher or lower, they adjust the price accordingly. You know, typically it goes higher if there's high demand and then they increase the price for the next lot of cards. I don't think Team Covenant was doing th things like that. There's no reason to, right? Because they had it fixed at $150 MSRP, either per their own decision or per agreement with Eric's Curiosa. We're not privy to those details. So it would be speculation. I don't know, but... Yeah, he says that was Game Nerds. I mean, Game Nerds does that. They're not the only ones. A lot of the, the big-time online retailers employ that strategy where they list a, a finite number or they make it appear as so, right? That sells through, and then they relist more supply at a different price point, usually higher. So, <clears throat> all right. What else is interesting here? Yeah, Stephen declared it's officially sold out, so... If players really want to play, then as a community can can suggest they pick up singles to make a deck. Wait, if players really want to play, oh, then we as a community can just suggest they pick up singles to make decks. Yeah. Well, yeah, certainly. Like, I mean, singles for beta have been very affordable. It hasn't been a big deal. You could go on TCG Player. There were enough listings. You could go on eBay or you could go in Marketplace Discord, Facebook Discord. There's multiple face, uh, Facebook Marketplace uh, Facebook Discord. There's multiple Facebook groups and marketplaces. You could buy these singles all over the place. But that was before you could buy all day at $150 from Team Covenant. So the single sellers were buying in mass. I know some were buying a case every single month. I know that for certain because at some point there were limits imposed lesser than the 24. I mean, Team Covenant was not selling to... Again, this is what other people said, right? But people that we know from the discords, they were saying they were buying at four cases a clip for months. And then all of a sudden, Team Covenant wasn't allowing that. So maybe it was an indicator that the supply was getting lower. But nevertheless, these these single sellers, they buy in mass quantity the four cases from Team Covenant. And then like some were buying like many, many, many cases, like dozens of them from wherever they can find them. You know, when you get embedded in a community, you make relationships, you network, you get to know people and people present you with offers. So if someone is like a store throwing in a towel and they got a large amount from initial distribution and we're sitting on it. Sometimes they just want to let it go so they could go buy the next magic release or whatever. Uh, these freaking, um, altered MT, uh, altered TCG and, uh, 
I don't know, what, what is this other garbage that's out there these days, guys? I don't know, all these games, right? So they need the liquidity. They sell it off. If there's a buyer that's willing to buy, like a singles seller that's willing to buy 50 cases um, or even a store, right, that wants to restock their inventory of singles, they make major buys like that, and then prices are cheap. Now we're at a sealed product. So will those beta prices continue to be cheap? Yet to be seen. I mean, when supply gets choked, it really depends on supply and demand. If there's high demand and people scoop them up, it could pressure prices higher. If there's not demand for it and people already have their collections and they have all the cards they they could possibly need and want to play, then the demand curve goes down, right? And the price will go down or people just won't sell. They'll hold out, right? <clears throat> all right. Um so here's a good question. What exactly did Simon say in March of the Mortals about beta this year? I don't know. Some people were saying that, like, he said there wasn't going to be more. Or like, I remember when he was on Sophie's channel, Cardboard Guy, they did an interview, and he said at the moment they did not have plans to print more. But he said, you know, they reserved the right to change their mind. Or, like, you know, a business is going to gauge the market, and if they see an opportunity or a reason to do so, maybe they will. The question is now, can they, even if they wanted to? I mean, they got Arthurian Legends coming in six months. I, From all indications, I think the art commissioning is done. Um, since Simon was like willing enough to say that it's coming early fourth quarter, meaning early October at the earliest, right? Um, <clears throat> that would indicate to me that they're probably in print production now, right? The art's probably done, and they're probably in print production for Arthurian Legends. So does their printer, they only have one printer, at the moment, to our knowledge, we don't know that they added any other printers. Do they even have the capacity, if they wanted to, to be able to print more beta? I'm not sure if it's even logistically possible, and I'm not sure if the timeline would allow it because you wouldn't want the release to coincide with too closely to Arthurian Legends, right? It could uh, oversupply the market, jolt the market. It could erode uh, sales of Arthurian Legends potentially, I mean, you know, because people have finite financial means. I don't know. It's complicated, right? Beyond, there's the financial aspects, but there's also the logistical aspects of, is that even possible? I'm not sure. Um, Weeblewam thinks he said Europe will get small beta restock in April, but he could be wrong. All right, so I don't want to spread uh, information that may or may not be correct. So what are you saying here Sophie I don't think they have time before Q4 if we were getting more beta it'll be next year unless they already have printed more and stashed in until needed yeah that's exactly what I was just saying like I don't I don't know that it, I don't think it's logistically possible you're thinking they don't have time um I think it's yeah six months it's too tight unless they had the foresight I don't know because he just recently said within the past couple months right that like they didn't at this time have plans to print more and now you got this message again from Team Covenant here saying we have no expectation of restocking. And that is their primary seller. I mean, that's their primary distributor. Just say it like it is, right? They don't go, they haven't been going through Soho and PhD, um, or at least they haven't in multiple waves to our knowledge, right? It's been all coming from Team Covenant and Team Covenant doesn't think they're getting more. So as of this time, the leading thought is there will not be more. Um, right? I think that's, that's my conclusion, at least. What do I know? All right. Yeah. So you guys talking about release cycle, alpha, beta, Arthurian dragons. That is what's been confirmed. <laughs> well, <laughs> so I asked at the March of the Mortals, um, interview, great interview that Drew and Patrick did at the March of the Mortals with Simon. Simon did a great job too. I thought he was very articulate and uh, he's always very uh, smart and measured in his responses and careful with his wording because of savages like myself who mince every word and try to read into it um, and others, you know, who naturally want to do that to try to glean any kind of tidbit of information because we just love the game and we want to know like what the plan is and what the strategy. But um, I asked a question like, I think the way I phrased the question, I said, is the Ed Bear Jr. Dragon Lords mini set coming out between our Arthurian Legends and the next set. And I think the way he answered it was, it's coming after Arthurian Legends. So he didn't like, technically, again, like parsing the words very precisely, um, he didn't technically say it was between those two sets. It could be Arthurian and then 
the next set, and then dragons, technically, because he said after Arthurian, right? So, a little sly there. I don't know. I don't, you probably, I don't, you probably didn't mean to be sly, but I don't think it was definitively answered. But it's definitely coming after Arthurian Legends. Technically, that's what was said. All right. So I think like your order probably makes sense. Alpha, Beta, Arthurian, the Mini Lord Dragon set from Ed Bear Jr. I'm gonna be bringing like an insane piece of artwork to uh, to the Sorcery Spring Social in Baltimore. I'm going to bring a lot of stuff, guys. So you definitely got to go there. It's going to be cool to meet a lot of you in person. Um, but it just reminded me when you mentioned Ed. So, yeah, so revised, I mean, that was also uh, asked in that interview. And, and Simon said, essentially, and this is the way I interpreted it. I did a video on this. He said, basically, that they need beta. They need enough cards out there for long enough to really get a sense of the game. The, the way players... I'm assuming players here. I, I don't know. I might be inferring a little bit from what, what he said, right? So go watch it yourself on Drew's Live or listen to the recap that I did. But I think what he's saying is he needs the cards out there enough with enough community feedback. Let's just call it community feedback, be that collectors and or players, to really understand um, if revises needed and in what form. Like, would there need to be – and here again, I'm, I'm – this is where I impose my own speculation. Do they need to remove cards? Do they need to errata cards? Do they, you know, change the cards, like uh, the gameplay, if, if some cards are broken or if they're dominating the meta, meta and it's not fun and that's what the players are saying, right? Those, those types of things. Um, or if they're too rare, I mean, I don't know. I, it depends on the print run in that regard, but he said, like, that could be a few years off. So who's saying Keith Era on the Facebook group here? <laughs> If you're falling on the stream, I, I can't see all the comments. Someone said Keith. Oh, Donovan Juggerup. 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 Uh, <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, on Facebook, I can't tell who's saying what, guys. Let me get the announcement back up since that's the news we're talking about. But what what else do you guys... What else are we saying here? Any other interesting comments? Oh, now you're talking about what you want the future sets to be? Are we already moving on to that? What about the impact? Let me scroll up a little bit. I thought it was pretty interesting with people commenting on what they felt the impact <clears throat> to Team Covenant being sold out is. Hmm. <clears throat> Here's an interesting one. <clears throat> Last Alpha Foil File of Stone went for $4,200. Haven't seen one sell since. Sellers are wanting two to three times. Many are CGC graded, which is trash. <laughs> Clear misalignments on those prints, yet get a 10. Actually, I think like everyone says that. Whenever they see like a slabbed Philo stone, they say it's like not centered, right? So I don't know if that's like an illusion from the art or if that's like, I don't know. Everybody has a favorite grader, right? So they're all of them get the same kind of criticism, CGC, PSA, BGS, based on people's biases. That $4,200 sale, I remember that. I know the guy that sold that. I was on eBay. It closed at a weird time. I think it didn't get enough. It didn't get a lot of attention and kind of slipped through the cracks on that one because I know, like, you know, prices have been all over the place. That's a problem. Like, when things aren't super li liquid and there's only, like, a limited amount of public sales data, it's really hard to get a pulse of, like, what fair market value is. <clears throat> um, all right. So I'm generally caught up on – if I so I'm generally caught up on the comments – from going back to Josh's where he said 81 boxes were sold. If I missed something earlier and you guys really want me to see a comment and talk about it, just repost it again. Um, let's see. I want a fun card. <laughs> you guys are just getting wild right now. I guess we buy more sample breaks and APs. <laughs> I'm doing a sample break on Sunday, guys. That's going to be a lot of fun. It's a 20th milestone, 20th pack. It's a 20th break we've done, I'll say. I opened like, because I sold a few packs sealed, and the guys graciously allowed me to open it on the channel. There were like two or three like that. So I've opened like 22 or 23 on the channel 
but this will be break number 20. It's a milestone, but that's like 22 or 23 sample packs on the, on the channel, which is like insane because uh, they're just insanely rare and they're stupid expensive now. They're so hard to, to get, but yeah, we're going to open a pack on Sunday. That'll be a lot of fun. Up to 14 stones sold on TCG player. Were they beta stones? Or were they... Um, let's do a search for Philosopher's Stone. And if you guys have other topics or comments you really want me to hit... Spelled it wrong. <laughs> Philosopher's Stone. Um, here we go. All right, let's take a look at... So you got the... Wow, the Alpha Non-Foils at 460 listed. Two, look at this. So the Alpha, there's only two listings. I mean, these cards are so hard to acquire. <laughs> of course, the Cold Foil Heroes and UGC Digital. So they're they're around 10 grand ask. Let me see. They're still, still gathering sales data. So they're just not selling on TCG Player. I mean, they're not being offered, really. And they're not being bought, either. There's only a couple listings. So then we have uh, a Beta Foil. Let's take a look at the Beta Foil Stone. And this shows the price coming down. I mean, you got to look at scale here, guys, because it makes it look super dramatic. But it's like 1160 to 1070. It's almost in the noise, like 100 bucks, right? I mean, <laughs> that curve makes it look like the end of days. But that's really like 100 bucks when you're at like a four-figure price point. That's that's not that much. It's like within 10%, right? Um, so I don't know. Maybe some of you guys think that's a lot, but 10% on a four-figure thing isn't isn't too crazy all right so we only have two listings again 1150 1151 i don't know you must be talking about non-foil stones right because you have a near mint foil there's only one that sold today at 1151 so the beta we have a confirmed sale at 1151 and there's only two available the one's at 1150 this guy's only has 40 sales this guy's at 1151 with shipping included so same price Wizard Shop, over 25,000 sales. Um, all right, so that's the foil stone. Let's look at the non-foil beta. Pretty inexpensive. Now, this is a more significant curve, right? Because you were at $204 at peak, and now it's saying 120 So that has actually declined quite a bit. And now this will be interesting. Like, people typically use the most coveted like iconic card in a game as the benchmark and the measure of the health of the secondary market or just kind of like uh, the barometer of the, se the secondary market, I guess, is the term I'd use. Um, so the Philosopher's Stone is going to be that card. And here you have the Beta Stone. I mean, a lot of people perceive Beta as the player set, I would say. Alpha was like the big splash, Kickstarter quickly skyrocketed in value and it became like people consider a collector set because the barrier to entry to buy it was very difficult. And then you had beta. Of course, the players are going to buy the cheapest product available and they're going to go to beta, right? So typically the Grail card in, in the player set is uh, <clears throat> it's going to be a, a different uh, supply demand curve, different dynamic because players... Typically, collectors may not stack this card like they would a alpha card, right? Because if it's perceived as a player card, that's more of a play on player demand, and we don't have a gauge. We don't know the print run of beta. You don't know the supply. You're kind of shooting in the dark on whether this really will be collectible and a worthy investment. Um, I guess I just say this isn't investment advice, as people say, but I don't know. It's more of like the player. It's player demand uh, predominantly. But now that we're sold out, will that will that change now? What do you guys think? Do you think this changes? Does beta become a collector's item? I mean, I think people are going to watch the market closely and start making that judgment. Like if more supply doesn't come to market in the next month or two, or if it's very very thin for sealed product, I think there will be some impacts one way or the other on singles cards. Um, they could start to increase for beta if more collectors and speculators and investor types start scooping those up um, to try to like, you know, speculatively invest, so to speak. So I guess this is what he was talking about. Um, look at all the sales. I mean, I guess that's an indicator, right? Like it's unfortunately, there's not a timestamp, huh? On these sales. They were all today, right? Let me look at, um, can I configure this for one day? Yeah. All right, so there's the one-month graph. 
Yeah, it's been on a steady decline over the past month. Let's take a three-year view, six month, and one year. This is pretty interesting. So it started low. It kind of dipped at release. And then it spiked to 203. And now it leveled off to pre-release prices. All right, but there were a lot of sales today. So what does that mean? Do players suddenly need it? <laughs> or did they see the team covenant announcement and now more speculators are starting to step in and look at all these sales that happened today 118 and then it pressured prices up to 125 i mean there's not like a wild increase and there's still listings ah now look at the listings here there's only one person willing to sell at 127 plus five shipping and then you see a quick uptick where people are trying to reestablish a valuation price point at 140 plus and then it quickly escalates from there. All right. And most of these people are only dipping their toes in the market with one. Uh, there's one guy here that has three and then another that has five. So very interesting dynamics at play. Um, hang on a second here, guys. Uh oh, Sophie, wake up. Sophie. I want the Weedos. All right, let me say. You woke no. up, Sophie? When did you wake up? I opened it. It's already open. Bring it downstairs carefully. You can't eat the Doritos up here because you've got the white carpets. You can have cheesy orange carpets. Bring cheesy. it downstairs. You want to share? You want some? Go live action. Dad? Yeah. Why did that end? I'm going to come down in a, in a few minutes. We'll go outside. In 10 minutes? Yeah, and then we'll play football. Ten you want to play minutes. football or soccer today? I'll play... Football or soccer? I'm thinking... Come on, man. You got you to gotta make an impulse decision here. I'll play football. Football? All right. So Real football. football. So if you want to play football? And we say if we All right, eat your Doritos in the kitchen. And then we say if we don't want to hike and somebody, cut, and somebody can catch it. And I'll be the quarterback. I'll throw it to you. You catch it. What's the quarterback? The quarterback's the guy that throws the ball. That's me. Like, That's me. Behind me? Yeah. You give it to me and I'll throw it to you. All right? Five minutes. All right. Deal. Eat those Doritos downstairs. Deal. All right. Deal. Oh, so. <laughs> quick one. I don't know. I'm here. <laughs> All right. Quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Careful with the Doritos. Be me. <sighs> Five minutes. Football time. It's a nice day today. I got to mow the lawn too. It's freaking out of control. <laughs> Sneaks right up, right up on you in the spring. You know, you're good to go. And then a week or two later, boom. You got like five inch grass and you're the disgrace of the neighborhood. Can't have it guys. This is just like clipping your nails before a live, you know, you got to keep it clean. Especially if you're the end unit house, you know, you got to keep it respectable. <laughs> All right. So I got five minutes. I'm on borrowed time. Any last comments here? I appreciate everybody dialing in or uh, tuning in or whatever whatever you call it here. 90 to 100 people. That's pretty awesome. Um, you know, it's like a miracle. I was home today. I took off from work today. This isn't my full-time job, believe it or not. <laughs> Even though I spent a lot of time on it. Um, I stayed home today. With, I went to Chuck E. Cheese with the kids. And then the baby fell asleep. You probably saw her in the background there. So I had a window of opportunity. It's always on Fridays. You know, like Eric's Curios is making these major announcements on Fridays. Today they announced the play mats. We talked about that first thing. And then we talked about uh, this Team Covenant news, man. Really wild. Sold out of beta. What happens next? All right. Let's see. Everyone's talking about Doritos all of a sudden. Um, what's Zonimi saying? I think people were seeing a drop. And we're holding off for sub 100, but now that it's sold out, it is time to jump on it before it spikes to 200. <laughs> You're going to create some FOMO with these 90 people. Um, I don't know. Like, uh, just anecdotally, there is going to be FOMO and panic. That's what happens. It's, it's almost like when the company, in this case, it's almost like the company announced it's out of print because they were using Team Covenant as like their de facto distributor. And now that distributor is saying they're out of inventory. So, I mean, it's not the same as out of print because the company could decide to print more. But 
he goes on to say, and he didn't have to do this. I mean, it's kind of interesting. He even chose to, to phrase it like this. He said they have no expectations of restocking. Like, why add that? For clarity of the community? I mean, it's good. It gives us, like, useful information, but that's fascinating, right? It's not like, hey, we're out of inventory. I mean, they're going to get the question, so maybe he headed it off anyway, right? But it's an interesting ad. We have no expectation of restocking. So do what you will with that information, right? Um, hopefully the players can get what you need. If you're a player, you should probably get what you need, right? Just to hedge if you can afford to. Get out there, get the cards, trade with people. Hopefully you could trade with other players or collectors that have duplicates, you know, trade card for card. Do what you got to do. Don't get shut out. Just hedge against the possibility that there could be no more supply of beta and things could get kind of wild. That, Cause that's a risk, right? There's a risk. You got to factor in the risks when you make decisions like that. But also, I mean, maybe don't go crazy. Just be responsible, right? Like don't go crazy. At the end of the day, do whatever the hell you want with your own money, right? Like, or your cards, <laughs> but just a few things to consider. All right. Personally, I don't see the price of not, oh, hang on, let me show it here. Spiel Rahu. What's up, dude? Personally, I don't see the price of non foil beta singles changing a lot right now, other than maybe stones and cores. Desirable foils will go up in price fairly quickly. The thing about. Oh, okay. The wife's getting Kava. All right. So, guys, these beta. So, although Team Covenant has had five months where you could buy any. One of us, Mama Luke's, could go on teamcovenant.com and just buy four cases every month for five months, right? So it seems like supply was a lot. Like the print run seems like it was significant. But if you've been following TCG Player or, you know, I don't follow the singles religiously because I'm much more into the artwork, like original paintings. I mean, I do have like a business aspect of my brand or entity and thing I do, right? Like I sell paintings, I sell artist proofs, prints, embellished prints, all this stuff, right? I don't sell a lot of singles, like certainly not at volume, not like on a player level at the low valuations. I'll auction like high-end cards, curios, um, middleman deal on high-end collections and stuff like that. But I keep a pulse on the regular market, uh, the market for singles and single sellers, because I know a lot of the big time single sellers. And what they've told me is that demand has been very strong for beta. And it seems like it's largely from players because they've been buying the cheap stuff too to fill out decks and the, and the individual cards they need. But another thing that they've observed from looking on eBay, looking on TCG player where they operate, looking in, in discords, on marketplace, I mean, on, on the marketplaces, on discord, on Facebook, there are not a lot of foils, even in beta. You have cards like Step. You have cards like, um, what's the other dual one? Ruins by Dan Seagrave. Go try to find those cards. They're really hard to find. They're they're more expensive than the other dual lands. And there's just not a lot of supply. So either people are sitting on them or they're playing with them with the foil variants, right? Or they're just not selling them for whatever reason. Or the pull rates are just so low that they're hard to get. I mean, even with a very large, we saw this, right? Even with a very large print run, 29,000 cards from alpha, the amount of foil singles is a very, very small amount. And people don't open every box. They stash the boxes. They're a bunch of shelfers, as Dave Sheedy says, up at Flights 2 Games in Albany, New York. There's these shelfers. They put the boxes on the shelf. They don't open it. They sit on it for years. You know, assuming it'll go up, they could sell it sealed. They could retire at age 23. No big deal, right? <laughs> it's teenagers. The twins. The twins are buying them up. They're putting them in the closet. They're selling them 23 retired, right? So a lot of boxes don't get opened. And then the pull rates are so low that it's, and it, the set size is huge. 402 cards in beta, right? Because the Eric's Curio says not in the set, <laughs> except for the Curio. But to pull a foil is difficult. To pull any individual single foil is very, very hard. So we have people that have opened boxes at scale, 1,000 to 2,000 boxes. Oh, let's, let's call it 1,500 to 2,000 boxes in that range. That's the range. And they're getting like maybe a dozen 
1,500 boxes of certain individual foils, even in beta. And I'm not saying this for FOMO or to stonk the market. I really don't care about that. Again, I don't sell these cards, right? I'm into like painted stuff, paintings, art, artwork. I love the art um, and like other unique rare things, right? Like curios and stuff. But the individual foil variants of cards, even in beta, it's very hard to pull a lot of those in the boxes. And most people don't open 1500 boxes. So they have like some small subset of foils of the 402 set, set the two, 402 card set. There's just not a lot of them. They don't have a lot of duplicates. They don't have a lot in total. So they don't sell them. So it's very illiquid um, and just not a lot out there. So they're hard to acquire. And now it's gonna be harder because there's not more supply. Uh, you know, according to this announcement and as far as everything we know. All right, what else, what else? A few more minutes, risk schmisk. <laughs> all right, let's see. Uh, yeah, now all eyes will be on Ethereum Legends, but what do you do for the next six months, Maggio? Uh, you play with the cards you got, right? What do, what do collectors do? You pay more, you trade more, I guess, right? What else can you do? That's the thing, what do you do for the next six months? Will stores continue to support? Will players just i mean if you're a player and you've been in since release you probably have a great collection you might have a full play set of everything it doesn't matter this news doesn't matter to you right i think a lot of players are super passionate about sorcery and they're probably going to be content because they already have play sets they can make any deck they want they have a huge set to explore so good on you that is the best position to be on because this news means nothing to you you can play this beta set as much as you want you don't need to buy more you don't care you just want to play the game that's the sweet spot. That's the place to be. What about the new person just coming into the game? How do they get the cards? Hopefully singles will stay cheap. They can get them. Hopefully pre-cons will be available. They can learn the game inexpensively. I don't know. Maybe some people just open a ton of boxes and have cheap collections and, uh, you know, can give away cards. I mean, that helps on a small scale, not on a broad scale. So, you know, it could stymie growth a little bit potentially over the next six months. But, I mean, up until now, the company's had more demand I think, uh, you know, Simon made some comments, I thought, along the lines of they don't have the produ production capacity to meet demand, you know? And it was like, because people complain about marketing and this and that, right? What about, it, it, it reminded me of like Tesla when they came out. They had a, such a grossly imbalanced supply and demand equation that the demand was so overwhelming that it that they didn't need to market, right? Their, their production capacity even if they wanted to, they could not produce enough to satisfy the overwhelming amount of demand. Um, so that has been the market dynamic for sorcery. And now the supply went from choked through a, a specific choke point, Team Covenant, to now Team Covenant not having any. Um, so overwhelming demand, fixed supply, no more new supply. What happens? I don't know. It's going to be very, very interesting. Uh... Hey, what's up, Edwin? I had a great uh, interview with Edwin, um, or discussion. I, it wasn't like an interview. We had a discussion like a week ago. I've opened six boxes of beta on my own and a couple alpha boxes with open boosters, and yeah, foils are pretty rare. Yeah, man, exactly. Like, Because the set's massive. And then the pull rates, like you don't... Let's talk about just uniques for a minute. Like, what do you get, like a few per box? And, you know, if you're really lucky, maybe you'll get like 10 in a case or something like that. Let's say like a, even if you get a few per box, I mean, let's go to, um, let me get my numbers right, guys. I got on the, on the Collector Art House website here. If you go to Collector's Corner and go to Alpha Set Data, uh, there's a nice little chart here that gives you all the information you need, right? So look, in the set, this is Alpha, right? The only difference is in Beta, we don't know. So like the pop numbers are not correct because these are Alpha pop numbers. In beta, we don't know the print run size, so we can't figure out the population of each individual card. For alpha, we knew there were 29,000 cards, uh, pro roughly 29,000 boxes printed. So there were 67 uniques. So that's the point I wanted to hone in on. Of the uniques, oh, there's 67. If you're only getting like a couple per box, or if you're super lucky, like a dozen over the course of a case, there's 67 different ones to get. And then like, if you open like many cases and you're only getting like 10, um, 
you can get like some of the same, right? Like to get all 67 is incredibly hard. Even if you're opening at scale, which again, the single sellers, they open at scale. The breakers, they open at scale. But the, the breakers, they open them, they ship them off to people. The single sellers, they open at scale, mass quantities, four figure number of boxes, 1,000 to 2,000 boxes. And still they're only getting like a dozen of some of these foils, even in beta, right? So really hard to get a full set of alpha 403 in, in alpha and beta 402. Really hard to get a full set of alpha uh, or beta foils, even beta foils. So massive set size. Um, got the uniques, 103 elites, 128 exceptionals. I mean, think about even the exceptionals, there's three per pack. Um, that is the uh, that is the set composition. So the number of different cards at those different rarity levels. But to get that's then every card has a foil variant. So 128 foil variants, and uh, you're not getting like a ton. You're getting like um, at least an alpha. What was it like 12 foils per box on average? 12 total foils. <laughs> so to get a, a whole 128, I mean it's really hard to get it through the box opening experience. And even the single sellers don't have like mass quantity of these and that's why when you go on tcg player the numbers just aren't there i mean um they're not going to list all their stuff because it's inventory management for a single seller if you if you list it all and someone does a buyout and swoops in and buys all your stuff guess what you're not a single seller anymore you're out of stock or you're having to go go uh pay up to get more and it becomes problematic so um All right, guys, I'm getting the raid right in the village. I got to run here. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, it was great. Like I had 100 people, 90, 90 plus people the whole time. It's pretty, pretty awesome, pretty fun and exciting. If you like what you saw, like and subscribe on this. I'm going to do a sample pack break on Sunday. Please subscribe to the channel. You'll get the notifications. You kind of, I do a lot of lives. So I love doing lives. It's a lot of fun. I don't do a lot of recorded content, but the lives are great. And it's not Fun. No, it is fun, dude. It's not fun. Hey, hey, what, what, what are you eating chips up here? I can't. All right. All right, guys, have a great day. See you next time. Take care.